Guys, how's it going? This is Kato Chess. This is a game of me playing the Carol Con. The purpose of this video is to help people between 400 and 1,000. Uh, I'm only 1,300, gone close to 1,500. I do make mistakes, forgive me. But the whole reason why I've been making these videos and why I'm making them in this format is because I know when I would watch other players play, um, sometimes they were so advanced that their ideas actually didn't help me. It just confused me more because they would find moves in critical situations that I knew I was not at the rating range to to really capture. So in these videos, I'm trying to keep them pretty simple in my thought process. So if you are between you know the rating range of, of 400 and uh, 1,000, I, I do think this will be helpful. I do a lot of analysis at the end of this video. Uh, again, it's not perfect, but I do think it will be helpful. I was 400 really not that long ago. Um, so I'm just kind of hoping that that there's less of a gap between where I am and where, uh, you know, like a, a 2500 is trying to teach chess. There's more of a gap. So it's a little bit more complicated in, in their thought process and the way that they explain things. And I just hope that mine's more simple. And I try to explain things in a way that I wish they were explained to me. I don't do a ton of talking in the game, but after I, I really deep dive into my thought process, whether my decisions were right or wrong. So uh, I hope you find this video helpful. If you do, not even for the algorithm, just for me, drop a comment. Just let me know what you liked or didn't like or what I could do better or what I didn't do good enough. Um, it's just helpful for me to get some feedback. So hope you enjoy this video. Let me know what your thoughts are. And thanks. All right, let's play the Caro. I'm pretty decent at explaining the Caro. This is becoming really popular. Um, I know that this seems to be okay for for black because this line gets very tricky and I even might just well uh, I feel like I should take I don't know if that's right I'll check later but we'll find out now I'm gonna go here the whole point is he hasn't moved this pawn so there's no like immediate danger of checks yet and typical move orders is uh, before you capture the knight should be here first um, and then when he takes like that, I kind of want to, I, I want a trade to happen because I want a knight to end up on this square. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to just go here. Uh, this pawn in the Karo, you, you can't drop this pawn. The second you drop this pawn, I mean, it's, it's basically game over. So now if I go here and he goes here, uh, eh, I don't know if it's time to go there yet. Maybe it is though. You know what? Maybe it is because then maybe we could trade queens. Uh, I could also grab the pawn and then he grabs and then I grab. No, that doesn't work. That's just bad for me. That just loses a queen. So I think... Uh, I think what I'll do, let's see, I think I'll just go here and try and trade some queens because I mean this pawn is under so much fire, yeah he like kind of has to. My knight looks a little silly but uh, let's see, I think I'll drop it back this way, this is going to start to get a little too clustered. Okay at some point he wants to push this pawn, that, that's, that's what he's going for. So I want to go here and try and stop that that pawn push from happening. I'm also going to have to castle at some point. He's probably going to put his knight here. Oh, really? That's where he puts his knight. Okay. So the knights come marching in, huh? And I think he wants that square. Um okay, now now's the time where I have to come up with something. So I need to start breaking it up a little bit. I think he wants to go here at some point. Okay. Let's go here. Takes, takes, takes. And I can drop back to here and give a check. Okay, so he moves his king forward to attack my uh, knight, but I don't think he realizes it's defended and it's going to be a little tricky to remove this pawn. So... I'm going to go here, assuming he's going to go here. That's my plan anyway. I'm trying to think uh, ahead of time. Okay, now I'm going to go here. I'm going to try and double up. That's a weird move. Okay, I'm going to go here and trade. Whoa. 
Okay, that's a crazy move to find for someone in this rating range. Huh. I'm like, uh, pretty stunned. But he does hang a rook. So that's crazy. Kind of want to get rid of this knight altogether, if I'm being quite honest. Then we're going to stop that pawn from moving. I'm going to bring my king in. Alrighty. Uh, question is, how do I bring my... Okay, so we have to get rid of this pawn. Because that's his biggest asset. So if I could get rid of that pawn, we should be in pretty good shape. I'm going to go here. Uh, I'm going to try and at some point win a free rook. Yeah, and he resigns. Okay. I was frozen there for a second. Happens at the end of the game for some reason. So I have one miss, two blunders, and six mistakes. Um, yeah, it's a pretty clean game. So usually for the last uh, the last game, I usually like to give a pretty pretty big overview as to my thought process. Just kind of break down what happened. Uh, from my perspective, not going to use an engine. We could just use the uh, analysis bar. I'll bring that into play so you guys can see it. That should be good. All right, so what the heck happened that game? So this was kind of my thought process here. Uh, we're playing the Caro. He plays some... Um, I don't even know what. Actually, I might pull up the analysis for one second. Just, just for... Just for a, a moment. Let's see what the heck we were supposed to do there. Because that was kind of odd. And I don't want to give like an incorrect analysis. I'm going to cover my face for a second, maybe even. Yeah, let's just cover my face for a little while. Actually, do we have to? I don't think you guys need to see the lines. I could just explain them. Alright. <clears throat> so I don't think that's a terrible move, uh, in my opinion. Uh, right now it's plus 0.3, but if he doesn't play, eh, he has a couple options. Basically, uh, he has to either play um, bishop e2 or knight f3 are basically the only ways that he uh, isn't losing by default. Both are pretty natural. I, I think that is what he played. So he played the top engine move, which, I mean, it's not surprising. That's not like incredibly impressive to play a pretty obvious move is like that. I took. Uh, apparently that's not best. Why is that not best? Apparently I'm supposed to play here. What, what is this? Here, takes, takes. Okay, so I guess the idea is it wants you to open this up. Because what if here and then takes... Apparently this is just great for me. Queen takes? Oh, and then here, and then you just continue on like it's a normal caro. Okay, got it. Oh, let's see. So instead of doing all that, um, I just played like a normal caro. And right now, I mean, it's, it's winning for black already. Not by much. I mean, equal slightly winning depending on what he does. He has to play um, f5 in order for it to be equal. Um, he didn't play f5 to say the least. Um, this is the best move, uh, which makes a lot of sense, you know, breaking up the, the this pawn here and having these two strong center pawns. I'm assuming it's probably takes, takes, and takes, and you just have a weird funky position. I've never seen that position. So I bring my knight out. Um, I always do this trade after I bring the knight out. I don't really know. Actually, I don't really know how to explain why that's best, but in some move orders, uh, it's the best to do that. Uh, and then I place my bishop on c5. 
He took by knight. I was kind of hoping for this line to happen anyway. Now it's just winning. Uh, it's practically plus two. I'm supposed to play knight e7 next. I definitely... Oh, I did play that. Okay, fantastic. And uh, it's probably best to trade here. Yeah, it is best to trade here. I played the second top engine move. So my idea was I didn't want to take and improve his queen. Like I said, this pawn's really important. I want his, his queen to stay away from this pawn. Um, so I was just hoping he takes and then I take. And, you know, as long as you could win um, these squares or, or this pawn and this pawn, the E and D pawn, in typical Karo lines is the best thing you can do. Uh, the next thing you want to look out for defensively is you want to make sure that this pawn never dies. And you also don't want a knight to end up on the b5 square. I've, I've noticed that, that that so many problems arise from that. So defensively, no knight on b5. Don't drop c6. You'll be okay. He trades. I trade. What do we got? Okay, I jumped my knight out. Don't know, really know if that was best. It wasn't a terrible move. Um... Ah, so I did have this idea to drop my queen back. I did not do that, though. Apparently what I played was not correct. It just kind of, um... I mean, there's still a slight advantage for black, but apparently not the best. In any case, we trade. Kind of lost my advantage here, but, I mean... 1300, how am I supposed to see, you know, see that it's a losing advantage? You know, when you're black, trading queens isn't a terrible idea. So I, I wouldn't say that this was a bad move or, or a terrible exchange. Um, I jump my knight back. Seems to be a decent move. Um, the whole point of me pushing this pawn forward was to, to A, restrict this knight from getting to this square, even though this one's wide open. And I noticed when he put his rook here, he probably wanted to push this pawn. Um, so I wanted to be able to trade off that pawn, if possible. This is just a terrible move. Uh, looks like rook b8 was actually the best move. I'm quite sure I missed that. Rook b8 or uh, knight, knight b6 were the best moves. I castled. Again, just pretty much sinking the advantage if he finds knight c5, which I think he did. No, I was much more afraid of knight c5 because, I mean, you, you, you're just not going to... It's going to be hard for me to contest this knight. Uh, and at some point, maybe even he could defend it with a pawn and just have a cute little bastion. Uh, in any case, he gets his bastion just on a different square, a little bit further away from my camp. I try and kick the knight out. Knight runs out. I, 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 at this point, when you start to get a little bit lower on time especially, you need to start thinking a couple moves into the future pretty quickly as far as what is my opponent probably going to do and if he does that how am I going to stop it so in my head I already knew I was going to play this uh, which uh, apparently was a dog shit move what was best you gotta be effing me in the A probably to get to here and here is my guess yeah I don't know anyway this felt right I was just afraid of this pawn storm so I just wanted to get rid of this pawn as quickly as possible. Um, let's see. It's still losing again for me, but I don't think that's a terrible move. He trades. I check him. He brings his king forward. I attack a knight. Oh, apparently this is a bad move. What am I supposed to do? I just claim any other lane. Okay. Starting to get a little bit low on time here, though. I was down about a minute. Let's see if that was the top engine move. Uh, third best line. I thought this was a phenomenal move. I, I wasn't even... I don't know. For some reason, my head, I didn't see that. I just thought his knight looked great here, defended by this pawn. I forgot he can even go here, which, I mean, truthfully, that's a big problem. This is probably another bad move. There's not too many options. Oh, top engine move. Just kidding. He pushes his pawn. Apparently, that's a bad move. What do I do? Apparently, I'm supposed to trade rooks here. Ah, I see the idea. So, I'm supposed to trade rooks. So, when he trades, um, I could win this pawn and then this rook is um, this rook's pinned. So, I did not see that in low time. So, I traded. He traded. Whoa, whoa. What did the engine just do? What was I supposed to do here? Win a free rook. I think I did that later. Win a free rook. I said, fuck that rook. I said, I don't need a rook. I don't need your rook. I'm above that. 
And then this, this, I don't think this was bad. It might even be a decent move. It's a fucking terrible move. It's minus 60, though, if I could, uh... If he, if he puts his king here, it's minus 60. But he just took. Okay, I stopped the pawn. Now, my thought process here. Don't lose these pawns. This is somewhere... This is, like, the point of the game where I feel like I used to really screw up. I used to just completely get blinded by the idea that the, the king becomes an asset in the end game. So I put my, my, my pawn here to secure... Uh, this pawn, also secured by my king, also advancing the pawn a little bit. Super important in the endgame, start advancing pawns when possible. Making another queen or a race to make the other queens important. I noticed that uh, earlier in my rating range, I would just try and... I don't know. Try and win with, with my minor pieces or my rooks. Um, the point at the end game essentially, is to make a new queen. So, pushing a pawn... As long as you don't have a better move or it's not detrimental to your position, just start pushing pawns. You know what I mean? Now I bring my king forward, stopping him from going here so he can never win this pawn. Uh, looks like he's going to go try and walk his king to my to my rook, but my, my, my knight is much faster. So my idea here is these pawns are defended, so my king has a job. Uh, defend these pawns. So my knight, who's doing nothing other than preventing this pawn to move, could really help me out here. Well, how could he do that? I could jump here. That's one, two, three. Start looking for how quickly your knight could get to their weaknesses or how quickly your pieces could get to their weaknesses. Um, so it's going to take me one, two, three moves to get to his pawn. And it's going to take him uh, one, two, three moves. Oh, hold on. one, two, three, uh, four moves to, to actually end up winning my knight. So there's my one move. He goes back. Don't really know why he did that. There's my second knight jump. And now you could just trade off the rooks. A lot of newer players will take like this. Terrible move. Now your rook is just pinned. So if you don't want to lose a knight, for example, let's say I take here, right? Well, yes, it's still winning, of course. But uh, anytime I move this knight, um, he's just going to win my, 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 my rook. Um, sometimes you could get away with it. Like, for example, if I could jump my knight here and my rook was here, I could defend it simultaneously. Um, and that's fine, but in this position, that's not possible. So, I think this is the most critical part of the game for beginners. Um, because let's just say I keep dancing around with my knight and he just, you know, wants to pretend he's Michael Jackson and dance all across the table here. Uh, in some instances, maybe his king could walk in and, um win win my rook or kick my rook out now he makes a new queen so when you get to this point of the game not to be too fucking redundant win the pawn with the rook uh, i mean at this point it's just lost he he just hung a fork might be harder for for players to see in low time but i don't really think it it matters like like yeah of course this just makes it go from like completely winning to you've got to have two brain cells to win after this but the point is even if i had missed that and I just drop my rook or my knight back to here and he like tries to pin it. I mean, just just get the pawns up the board. You know what I mean? Just trade, get the pawns rolling and uh, and you'll be good to go. Anyway, we ended up winning that game. That was a decent win. I, I, I hope that these videos are helpful uh, to some degree. And if you did find something helpful or if you did make it 25 minutes into the video, uh, I do appreciate, not even for the algorithm, but just for me, comments. Just let me know what you thought, what you felt, even if it's critical. I, I don't care. Just your thoughts on what was helpful or, or what might have not been helpful or what could have been more helpful. And uh, yeah, I mean, if you made it this far, thank you guys. I, I appreciate it more than you know. Take care.